I'm going to talk a little bit about the Doppler shift of stars and other objects in the universe and how we can analyze their velocities of recession or whether the stars are coming towards us and what the formula is for this. So from physics, we know that the Doppler shift, when objects go away from you, their frequencies tend to uh, seem lower. Their wavelength gets bigger. This is true for sound waves, light waves, water waves, or any other um, kind of wave. For a light wave, the equation is the following. Frequency of the observer, the frequency of the, the observer sees is equal to square root of 1 minus V over C over square root of 1 plus V over C times frequency of the source. So if, the, if you are the Earth, for example, and then let's say there is a star or some other object, and the star is going away at a velocity v, uh, the, it, it, the star is going to give out some kind of wavelength, right? Of course, it's going to give out wavelength of all kinds, right? Um, particularly if the star has hydrogen, which we know most stars ha do have hydrogen, it's going to give the bomber lines of hydrogen, right? The bomber lines of hydrogen correspond to 410 nanometers, 434 nanometers, 486 nanometers, 656 nanometers, right? But that's the bomber, uh, the bomber lines of a stationary star, right? If the star is moving away from us, what's going to happen? Well, the wavelengths are going to seem like getting bigger, and the, the wavelength in front is going to appear like getting shorter, right? So the, all of the wavelengths are going to seem like they are actually bigger, right? So the 410 might appear like it's 411. 434 might feel like it's 435. 486 might feel like 487, and so on, right? So. If the star is coming towards us, if we happen to be on the other side here, right, then everything is opposite. And the equation, the, the top becomes uh, minus, uh, the top becomes plus, the bottom becomes minus. So you switch it if the star is coming towards us. Switch the top, switch the bottom, right? So this is for, uh, for the source moving away. This is source moving away from us. Well, let's say you have a certain star that's moving away from us and we discover, uh, it's, we study its uh, spectra and we discover that it has a bomber line of uh, 656.85 nanometers. Okay? Now we know that the bomber line for a stationary star is equal to 656.3 nanometer, right? So therefore, the, the wavelength has been enlarged, right? And if the wavelength has been enlarged, that is a proof that the star is moving away from us. From this, we can calculate what the velocity of recession of the star is, right? We can put your frequency of the, that we're observing is speed of light divided by uh, the lambda of the observer, 1 minus V over C over square root of 1 plus V over C. And then frequency of the source is C over lambda of the source. This and this cancel. So basically, it's a matter of inverting the equation for the frequency and getting an equation for wavelength. And then taking this crossing multiply and then cross multiply this over there, you get lambda source square root of 1 plus v over c is equal to lambda observer square root of 1 minus v over c. And then the source is equal to 656.3 is equal to lambda observer, which is equal to 656.85. So this is what the stationary star would give you, and this is what it looks like it's giving us because it's moving away from us. That's equal to square root 1 minus V over C. Now we square both sides, right? 
and we're going to get what? 656.3 squared, 1 plus V over C is equal to 656.85 squared, 1 minus V over C. And now we take this um, and we bring this over like this, 656.3 squared V over C. And then this you, we multiply in, we take it to the uh, left side, plus 656.85 squared V over C is equal to 56.85 squared minus 656.3 squared. And now V over C is going to equal 656.85 squared minus 656.3 squared divided by 656.3 squared plus 656.85 squared. Okay? <clears throat> so we're going to get 0, 0, 0, 0.0083, let's say 838. Okay? So the, that means the velocity of that star is equal to, changing that to percentage, 0.0838% of the speed of light, right? So that's how fast the star is going away from us. If we want to actually get a number for that, we can multiply this number by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, or... Okay, that's still very, very, very fast. 251.304 meters per second, which is 251 kilometers per second. That's typical for objects that are moving away from each other on a universe basis, okay? Uh, galaxies, stars, they move away from each other or go towards each other at velocities typical of those kind of velocities, 251 kilometers per second. Then you can combine this with what we know from Hubble law, which I gave the lecture before, and you can find the distance of this star, right? So you could uh, do velocity versus distance, right? You have a linear line. You could say, oh, okay, the velocity is equal to 251 kilometers per second. So how far away is this star from us? Okay, uh, remember when we did the lecture on that, we got V is equal to HD, and the present accepted value of the Hubble constant was 71 kilometers per second per megaparsec, right? So, roughly, what kind of a number are we going to get there? Well, if the velocity is 251, that's equal to 71 times D. D is going to equal what? <coughs> Divided by 71. That's going to be 3.54 a megaparsecs. Okay? So that means that star now is 3.54 megaparsecs. Now let me go back for a second to the original equation and express it a little bit differently. So now, now let's express this in terms of the wavelengths. We can say, so the reason that we do this is oftentimes we talk about how much the wavelength has been shifted instead of how much the frequency has been shifted. So we, we want to express it in terms of wavelength. So now let's reciprocate this and we have lambda observer is equal to square root of 1 plus B over C over square root of 1 minus B over C, lambda source. Now the other thing we could do here is to express this in terms of beta. Beta is defined as B over C. It's the ratio of how fast uh, something is going to the speed of light. So we have now lambda observer is equal to square root of 1 plus beta over square root of 1 minus beta, lambda source. Now the other thing we could do is multiply both sides by um, lambda observer, multiply both sides by 
Uh, square root of 1 plus beta. Square root of 1 plus beta. Lambda source. So lambda observer is going to equal what? On the, uh, we're gonna, on the top, we're going to have 1 plus beta. On the bottom, we're going to have 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared. Lambda source. Why is that good? Well, that's also a factor that we learned in relativity known as the relativistic uh, factor, gamma. Gamma is defined as 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared. 